Okay, so now I wanna share some specific tips. Firstly, a lot of moms out there that I talked to or women out there that I talked to and I said, what should I tell the, the teens and the, the young women about regarding their pelvic floor and their pelvic health? And so many women out there said, oh my gosh, I wish someone had told me about the importance of going to the bathroom the right way, <laughs> using the toilet the right way and not straining or pushing to poop or to pee. Those are both really common times that people strain and push. And the more we strain and push on our pelvic floor, the more we kind of push to get our pee out faster or push because maybe we're kind of constipated and it's hard, you know, we're stopped up a little bit in our bowels. That straining and pushing causes a lot of problems. It causes weakness of the pelvic floor over time. So if you're straining and pushing on a regular basis, like every time you go pee, that's a problem. You also, just so you know, you don't wanna sit on the toilet and do Kegel exercises. I've already talked about the fact that Kegels aren't necessarily the best exercise anyway for everybody. They, they can be good in their own place and time, but if anyone ever tells you to do 100 hundreds of kegels every day, or if anyone ever tells you to do kegels while you're going pee, don't listen. The kegels are those pelvic floor exercises and they're really not meant to be done as an exercise when you're going pee on the toilet. When you're peeing, it's a time to relax and let the pee out. Same thing with when you're having a bowel movement, when you're going poop. So let's actually talk about, let's talk about uh, having a bowel movement and the importance of diet and also water. So it's really important that you're getting plenty of fiber during the day and with your food. You're also getting plenty of liquid. Now, fiber and liquid are both really important to keep your bowel movements soft and easy to pass so that you don't have to strain and push to go. So make sure you're getting plenty of fiber. I like getting my fiber through fruits and vegetables. That is the main way that I get my fiber. And of course you can use whole grains as well. Just be careful that you're not eating a whole bunch of white processed breads and cookies and crackers and things like that. Ultimately, those things can cause a lot of inflammation in your body and they can cause bloating and they can cause constipation. So you wanna think about whole grains and fruits and vegetables and plenty of water. Just know that caffeinated sodas and coffee drinks and things like that, first of all, they're not great for your body. They can contribute to inflammation and pain, but also they're not that hydrating. They're not as hydrating as water. Water is amazing. So drink your water and eat your fiber. The other thing is when you are sitting on the toilet, let's talk about going pee and going poop. You don't want to be like this. You don't want to be hunchy on the toilet. Especially if you're having a bowel movement, you want to be sitting up nice and tall, long spine. You can maybe even lean forward with your elbows on your thighs. And if you have a step stool or something called a squatty potty, that's actually a really great way to bring your feet up and get you more into a squatting position. In a lot of places in the world, people use the bathroom like this, they squat. But in a lot of cultures, uh, people sit on a toilet. But the toilet is really not the best position the easiest position for you to have a bowel movement. Our bodies actually want to be in a position that's more like this. So if you have something you can put your feet up on, like a step stool or the actual thing called a squatty potty, that will help you get more into this type of position without having to actually squat on top of your toilet. So being in this position is really important. Just make sure that you're not hunchy through your spine. You wanna always be long through your spine and relax and take your time. When you're peeing and you're pooping, please try not to rush yourself. The more you rush, 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 rush all your life, the worse it is for your pelvic floor and it causes weakness over time. Okay, let's talk next briefly about periods and pain and the roller coaster of emotions and things that we can have during that time. So if you have uh, your menstrual cycle, if you have your period, just know that first of all, if you have pain, I've already mentioned this briefly, but if you have pain when you're inserting your tampon, if you use a tampon, then know that that is something you want to talk to somebody about. You shouldn't have pain during tampon insertion and you shouldn't have pain during 
uh, intimacy. If you are sexually active, there shouldn't be pain there either. So just know that if you're feeling pain, that's not something that's just to be expected or something you have to just get over it. No, <laughs> things like that should be pain free. And so if you're having issues, please know that you're not broken. There's there's nothing that you there's nothing wrong with you, but there are things you can do to help. Okay, it's really important to know that. So I wanna share with you really quickly kind of what the vagina is, because this might seem like, well, of course I know what a vagina is, but maybe you don't. So this right here is a little model of the uterus. Of course, it sits inside of the pelvis along with the other organs such as your bladder and your rectum where the stool comes out. So it's kind of snuggled in here with the bladder and the rectum, and then all of the guts are on top of that. So I'm gonna take the uterus out of the pelvis, and I wanna show you what's going on here. So this is your uterus, it's actually quite small. It gets big if you get pregnant one day, but it's very small in just a regular uh, woman who's not pregnant. So this right here, the bottom of the uterus is where the cervix is. The cervix is the bottom of the uterus. And then this right here, this tube, is the vagina. So if you didn't know that, you're not alone. A lot of people don't actually know that the vagina is not just the hole at the bottom. I think a lot of us know about the hole that's right there, but the vagina is actually this, this hole and then also the whole tube that goes up to the cervix and then the uterus. So that's really important to know. And the pelvic floor muscles surround this, this vagina. All right. So periods, if I'm not going to go too much into periods, but please just know that there is a roller coaster of hormones and emotions during this time. You are, are, are not alone if you experience the ups and downs of emotions and also if you experience some pain. When you're having your period, this is a time to take it easy on yourself and to not be... Uh, maybe so aggressive with your exercise if you have an option. It's a time to take care of your body to slow down a little bit and to not just push on through. Sometimes we don't have an option. Sometimes we have to do something that we'd rather not do when we're on our period. But just know that if you're really having some difficulties, take it easy on yourself. Now you can still do, if you're feeling up for it, you can still do all sorts of things when you're having your period but know that it's, again, not a time to go out and try to be a hero. Take care of yourself. If you are using tampons or things that you're putting in your body, I want you to be sure that you're using, if you can, um, you know, tampons that are ultimately organic, unbleached, a little bit safer than the highly chemical filled tampons that are out there. So if you can, try to choose one that's a little bit more natural. You can also use other types of protection like menstrual cups, or you can use period panties that you don't actually have to stick anything inside of you. They're just panties that are absorbent. So look at different options because what you put inside your body and what you put on your body, like lotions and fragrances, all of that stuff absorbs into your skin and it can impact your hormone balance as well. So please be careful with all of the chemicals that you put on your body. It absorbs right into you. That includes tampons. It includes things like douches and fragrance things that you may use down here. You don't need that stuff. Keep the chemicals as much as you can. Keep the chemicals away, especially from this very sensitive part of your body. Okay. The last thing I want to share with you is just all about focusing on this empowerment that you should hopefully feel a little bit by now, just by even knowing a little bit more about this really powerful, deep part of your body. As I opened this up with, it's really important that you know your body better than anybody else. You understand basic stuff about the anatomy. You understand how to take care of it, how to, how to feel these different parts of your body partially so that you know when something's going wrong. So things to look out for are again, pain, which I've mentioned several times. Sometimes even back pain, like low back pain, can be because you're having pelvic floor issues. So if you're ever having any type of symptoms that are an issue like back pain, or if you're having bladder leakage or anything like that, 
Those aren't normal things. They shouldn't be happening. So talk to someone about it. It's really, really important to open up this conversation with people, even if it seems like it might be embarrassing. It's better to take care of it now so that you're not having issues when you're 30 or 40 or 60 or 80. Many of us as women feel a lot of pressure to fit in and do things a certain way or do exercises to, to you know look a certain way or wear things like tight things like waist trainers or whatever the fashion trends are. They change all the time. But we have this pressure to do things that may not be good for our body. So please just remember that you are your own best advocate and you can use your own knowledge to do things to care for your body and to say no to things that you know aren't serving you. So things like waist trainers or things that squeeze around your middle or pinch around your abs, those are not good. They cause all this downward pressure on your pelvic floor. Remember that uncapped toothpaste tube and how the toothpaste just splattered out? We, want, we don't want things that squeeze around the middle because they put all that pressure down. The pressure has to go somewhere. It's either gonna go down or it's gonna go up. So we wanna let your body just be. We wanna make sure that you don't feel, feel pressure to, to do things just because everyone else is doing them. If something feels wrong for your body, listen and don't do it or modify. Find, find something that's slightly different, but you know, still gives you, gives you some satisfaction. So just listen in and tune in. And I want you to know that this part of your life is such a beautiful and powerful and important part of your life. Have fun and enjoy yourself. And remember always that you, you, you are perfect just as you are. You are beautiful just as you are. You are special just as you are. These strong inside muscles that are deep inside of you, it's kind of like the beautiful you that's inside of you that is perfect just as you are. We have so much pressure from outside sources to look, be, act, and do things in certain ways. Just know that you don't have to follow the crowd. You don't have to be like just like everyone else. Just keep being you. And sometimes getting in touch with this deeply feminine, powerful part of your body can be a really neat way to feel better about yourself. So take a deep breath with me right now and we'll just end on this note of just feeling that power within your body and within your soul. Go ahead and take a breath in where you feel like you're actually breathing down into that pelvic floor area. So breathe wide, expand your, your ribs all the way around, expand into your pelvic floor, breathe in, Feel that power, feel that strength, and then exhale, breathe it all out. I wanna thank you so much for your time and attention today. I hope you've learned a few things, and I hope that you'll tell a friend about this video too. It's basic information, but it really will protect you for life. And I know you're not thinking about when you're 80 years old right now, if you're 14 or 16 or 18 or 20, you're probably not thinking about you, yourself as an 80 year old woman. But when you're 80, you're gonna be so glad that you learned this basic information about your pelvic floor. It really is gonna make a difference. Thanks again for watching. And if you want more ways to get in touch with me and learn about my work, check the video notes. And until next time, remember to eat clean, move your body every single day, and take care of yourself and love yourself from the inside out and you will shine brighter. You will be more vibrant, more healthy. You will look and feel better for the rest of your life. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.